<laughs> okay, this is the High Arcs, um, <laughs> author of High Arcs, which recently uh, did very well in the um, in two championships. Um, how long have you been working on it? Uh, uh, oh, a long time. I first wrote uh, High Arcs probably back in 1979. That was as a school boy. Um, and then I, I, I sort of stopped sometime in about 83, um, picked it up again in about 86, and, uh, well, been on it ever since probably. Not full time. So, several years ago, um, I, someone did this article I've uploaded recently to YouTube, it, just the basic stuff at the, at the time, you know, years ago, alphabet to pruning and... Uh, and there were some basic things mentioned. So have, has the actual underlying technology it's improved leaps and bounds, evaluation function and everything else? Um, I'd say there's been more improvement in the search than the evaluation. There has definitely been improvements in the evaluation um, of uh, many aspects, including uh, imbalances and things like that. But uh, more improvement has come from the search. Um, so since the invention of Alpha Beta, really, the the two big inventions probably in search is, uh, the first is Null Move, which you could say was an invention of the early 90s, uh, although the, the, the people were experimenting with Null Move well before that, but the, the programs took good advantage of it in the 90s, Fritz for example, and Hiox and other programs. Um, and then the second boost in strength came in the, in the last decade, the 2000s, from uh, what's termed as late move reductions. So they're the two big uh, jumps, and they enable a deeper search, a much deeper search than you'd get ordinarily. All right, so a null move is like what any move well, So a null, what a null move is basically, the null move algorithm is basically saying that if, if say we're ahead in a position, um, then if we do nothing, and you can't take advantage of that, then we might as well just cut that part of the tree off because your posi my position is so overwhelming, I'm able to give you a move and I'm still able to win the game or the position is winning. Right. Um, now obviously that breaks down in a Zugzwang position where uh, obviously moving is a bad thing, right. but uh, you can work around that and they're, you know, they're, they're more the exceptional cases which crop up in end games. Yeah. But, um, the null move, because it uses this, is able to cut huge portions of the search tree out and you're able to get many plies deeper, right. uh, which effectively gives you hundreds of ELO, effectively. I mean, no, I didn't, didn't even ELO know about it. That's brilliant. And um, uh, when there's forcing moves, isn't there something singular extension or was it something like that? Uh, well, I think a singular hat. extension is a little bit overstated, yeah. Um, that's something that um, has been experimented on through the, the late 80s. I think really the term came from uh, the Deep Thought team. Um, they basically extended on singular moves. But to be honest, the improvement you get from singular extensions is not, it's not massive. So that's overstated. That's more, for finding combinations, it can be quite good because you're finding forcing lines. But uh, in terms of improving the actual strength of a program, singular extensions, it does co can contribute, but it can also make it weaker by effectively making you search very deeply down a line, which is never going to happen. So there are pros and cons, but it's not something I would say is a, a big uh, feature that improves the chess program tremendously, like null move or late move reduction. So Hayek's actually won the World Software Championship when they were given equal hardware. That's a really impressive achievement. Thank you. Um, that is just so impressive and it's used I think by a lot of correspondence players as well rather than the more trendy uh, ones and it's more original than there's been a lot of controversy about um, you know Ribka and Houdini and so they, they were justly disallowed from the World Computer Championship well, uh, the, Ribka was uh, there was an investigation by the International Computer Games um, Association into uh, the origins of Ribka and um, I think you can find that on the the, 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 their um, verdict on the ICGA website, right. um, which basically disallowed Ripka from further world championships. Yeah. And and so um, just lastly, so what are your aspirations down rating wise? For, is it, are you still trying to improve it to get it stronger and stronger, or is it well, going I am, to other? Well, that's not my exclusive. I don't exclusively work on that. All um, right. I mean, a, a lot of work is going into making the program play uh, in a more human-like fashion. 
um, not just at the, at the top strength, but also more um, at different set ELO strengths. So that for programs, see, I've got an iPad version and an iPhone version, and there'll be an Android version coming out in the new year. And um, basically, the idea there is to make it play in a, in a nice human-like manner, so you can get an opponent which simulates what you're going to find in club chess and this sort of thing. So it's, it's much. It's much more interesting to play an opponent like that rather than a, a, a much more computer-like style. Right. So, Excellent. Um, wow. That's, uh, that, that's where some of the effort is going, but obviously there are different um, different platforms to support, and uh, so there's a lot of work to do. But yeah, I mean, I would like to improve the strength of the engine when I get time to work on that side. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Thanks very much for your time. Um, okay. Cheers. Thank you.